What's up guys? Welcome back to Car Studio and in today's video it is part three of the motor build the BMW M20 eBay Turbo. Uh, what we've got here is a cleaned up, uh, meticulously cleaned up, uh, short block. Um, I just got it prepped to install the oil pan and the head and the water pump and timing belt and then we can start adding accessories to it and uh, get this thing back in the car. So um, off camera, I've got quite a few things done. Um, I spent um, like two hours, like I said, meticulously cleaning this engine block, uh, both inside and out. Um, I had to, I pulled the old head off and uh, honed all of the cylinders. They had a little bit of pitting um, where they had set for some time. Uh, luckily, a, a cylinder hone took care of it. Really didn't take long at all. Just sprayed some WD-40 down the cylinders and used the hone that I got for um, like $35 at Advanced Auto Parts. Got those cleaned up. Got all the carbon built up, cleaned off the pistons. Um, this block was actually really dirty. I was um, not too happy with it once I opened it up. Other things that I did was um, I pulled the car outside and I pressure washed the engine bay, degreased everything. I spent probably an hour at least doing that, just getting it all cleaned up really well. So this build has actually taken way longer than I expected. Um, I've actually I've spent probably a few weeks uh, between pulling the motor and taking it apart and cleaning everything. And I wasn't planning on doing all this, but I figured while it was all apart, why not go ahead and, and really take a little bit of extra time and effort and make it super nice, make sure everything is sealed and clean and in good working order. And uh, that's exactly what I've done. Yeah, so this block is all cleaned up now. Cylinders honed. Um, I blew out all of the jackets and um, wiped everything down. The mating surface is clean for the head gasket. So with that said, let's install this head right now. All right, got our new head gasket. It can only go on one way, so you can't screw this up. So real quick before we set the head on, this is very, very important. Um, now I don't have any timing covers or anything on this right now, so I can't uh, line this up um, for top dead center, but we don't need to because there's no head on it. So top dead center on cylinder one is right here. So all you do is turn the crank until the piston gets up to the top and stops. So you want to stop right before it goes back down. Okay, and that's turning clockwise. So we've got top dead center here. And you can see first and sixth cylinder are all the way at TDC and these uh, two through five are down. Okay, so on the head, and I just rotated this with the e-torque socket, you've got a timing mark here. Let me try and focus a little bit better. You got your timing mark here and here. So now this is also at TDC, meaning the cylinder one, the valves are fully closed, and you can know this by taking the rockers, and they got a little bit of play in them. And also, very important, when you set your head down uh, on a table like this, always, I've got two pieces of wood here. You never want to lay it down flat. And I'll get down here and show you why. Well, you can't really see, it's too dark. But there's a valve sticking out right here. So these are interference engines. So if I were to just set this on the table, I run the risk of bending a valve. Uh, so that's why I have it elevated in the center here. So now everything's at TDC. All we gotta do is set the head on here and start torquing the bolts. It goes without saying, once the head's on here and everything's tightened down, uh, do not turn the crankshaft or the cam gear on the head until you have your timing belt on and everything stays where it's supposed to because as I said, interference engine, start turning stuff, valve set pistons, you won't have a good day. All right, so now we're dropping our new head bolts with the washers on them. It's important to change your head bolts 
whenever you do a head gasket because the uh, they actually stretch when you go through the torque sequence. All right, I had to move inside. It got dark on me really fast. So with the head gasket comes uh, the torque sequence and also uh, tells you, you know your foot pounds. Well, I guess that's part of the torque sequence. Uh, but we want to um, set our torque wrench for 22 foot pounds. Okay, torque wrench set to 22 foot pounds, and uh, just like any other head, you pretty much work from your, the inside out. And we're doing 22 foot pounds on each one of these. So we start at the middle here. That one's 22, go right across from that one. And then we go diagonal from that, just working our way from the inside out. So Step two is the same sequence, one, two, three, four, etc. but we're going to do a 90 degree turn. So we're gonna start back here at the number one bolt right here. And you know, there are special, uh, or there are uh, fancy torque wrenches that have angle finders on them and there's things you can add to them, uh, just an analog angle finder, but um, I just do it the old school way. I'm gonna use the head as a reference. So right now this is a right angle. So I'm just gonna turn this until it's parallel to the head. Right now it's at 90 degrees. So. All right, we got that one. All right, step two is done. We did 90 degree on each one. Step three. Just repeat the process. So I'm going to start back at number one. Now it's very important not to forget on this last step which ones you've already done this to because you will snap a bolt and you do not want to snap a head bolt down into a block or crack your block or head. Okay, here we go. Now this one's going to be, if I remember correctly, it's been a few years, but this can get tricky because I'm trying to hold the engine stand with my leg here and uh, I'm, <laughs> this is a laborious process. These bolts are pretty tight. Yeah, that's pretty tight. All right. One down, 13 to go. All right, I think uh, my SD card filled up, so I don't know that I got the last part of that, but uh, just to recap, 22 foot-pounds following the torque sequence. Uh, that's step one. Step two is uh, 90 degree on each bolt, same torque sequence. And step three is 90 degrees again, same torque sequence. And that's it for putting a head gasket on. Super easy, obviously it's a reverse process for the removal. Uh, when you're taking the timing belt off, um, you don't have to have it at TDC. Uh, you might as well if, if your timing belt is good. Uh, this one didn't matter because I was changing the head um, and timing belt and everything. But um, when you release the timing belt, the cam will stay where it's at. So you don't have to worry about like the, tam the cam rotating and you know the valve hitting the piston or something. Uh, it won't spin on its own, but it will spin if you spin it, obviously. So uh, yeah, well right now I'm going to throw the oil pan on. Um, probably don't need to show you guys how to do that, so I'll skip that part. And uh, then we'll do the timing cover and timing belt. Actually, it would make more sense to put the timing cover on since the uh, oil pan actually goes around that and that needs sealed as well. So we're gonna do the timing cover and timing belt right now. Here's our timing cover with our new seals installed and we also have a 
new gasket. This thing is super, super thin. It's literally just like a piece of paper. As you can see, it's a little tricky trying to get these seals on without them uh, rolling. So I used a little bit of WD-40 as a lubricant and now I'm using this really small flathead screwdriver to uh, keep it from rolling. Double check our gasket all the way around. We're in there. Now that the timing cover is on, I can zoom in here and show you the actual timing marks for the crank. So we've got that little line right here, and we've got a little notch right there in the timing mark. And that's where you want it to be, to be uh, TDC. Now, I'm not gonna tighten this uh, crank bolt right now because if I do, then well, obviously the crankshaft will rotate and uh, possibly bend the valve. So we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna go ahead and get the timing belt on and get it in time, the tensioner on. Next, we need to do the water pump. And then we can, because uh, the, the belt tensioner is part of that. And um, yeah. Show you how it works. All right, water pump is super easy. Three bolts and this uh, gasket here. Three 13 millimeter bolts. This right here is our timing belt tensioner and I am not 100% sure what I'm doing is right just yet. I know there's a spring and a rod that goes right here. I don't remember the order that they go in so just bear with me here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and slap this on. Let's double check our timing marks. So this one Yeah, you can't spin that with your hand. Crank is perfect. Tops where it needs to be, the cam. Okay, kind of messed up. You have to uh, put the tensioner spring in before uh, you do the timing belt. So it goes like this. This side goes into the water pump and the other side goes into the uh, tensioner. Got that. Go ahead and tighten that bolt up some more. Again, double and triple check your timing anytime you mess with this belt. Now this makes it trickier. This belt is pretty tight. You just gotta work your way around. Make sure all your sprockets are right. Once you have the spring tensioner in and you're almost ready, take a pry bar. Oh, you wanna pry this tensioner as far over as you can. Every little bit counts, helps. And then tighten this bolt up. Okay. Hopefully we have enough slack to get it on. All 
It also helps to not put the belt all the way on the pulley. Just get it started down here just a little bit and just keep working your way around one tooth at a time. It's tight, guys. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, sweet, timing marks are still perfect. Now, loosen this bolt, and now we have tension on the uh, timing belt. Okay, with the timing belt installed, we got the covers on. I'm gonna rotate the engine slowly a couple times. We've got good tension on the belt. Everything's tightened up. Let's rotate the engine a couple turns and verify that our timing marks stay where they need to. All right, our timing marks are spot on. So we're good to go on that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the impact, tighten this uh, crank pulley bolt on. All right, guys, we got the long block together. It's all assembled, and uh, take a look at this thing. So I just kind of threw the exhaust manifold on there. It's just sitting on there. Um, so just recap, we installed the head with new head bolts and head gasket, obviously, torqued everything down uh, the correct way, put the timing belt, or the timing covers on, uh, the timing belt, new timing belt tensioner, new water pump, then we cleaned the heck out of the oil pan. Uh, I had already ran it through the parts washer, but it was covered in Permatex from the last install. And uh, so I cleaned it again with a wire wheel and uh, resealed the oil pan. And it's all cleaned up and sealed. And uh, yeah, so now we have a long block. We could toss this in the car if we wanted to after putting the clutch on. But uh, over the next couple days, I'm just gonna take my time and uh, install the crank pulley. I need to clean them up and paint them. There's a couple other little parts that I need to clean up in the parts washer and paint. And uh, so next video, we're gonna finish assembling this motor, put it in the car, and um, hopefully take it for a test drive. I hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, maybe taught you how to put the head gasket on an M20 motor or a timing belt change or water pump. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or any suggestions on this build. Um, I take any criticism or advice. Uh, I don't know everything. Uh, nobody does. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe, follow this build. And uh, we got a lot more coming on this car. I can't wait, guys. See